So what happens to Afghanistan after the U.S. pulls its troops out? It's a question I asked Phyllis Bennett. She's a project director at the Institute for Policy Studies. She says there's no question that hostilities will continue after most American troops have left. The degree to which it will be a U.S. war remains uncertain. We saw that same phenomenon in Iraq when we heard at the beginning that there would be no more combat troops, but there would be support troops, there would be counterterrorism troops, there would be training troops. All the same categories we're hearing now about Afghanistan. The difference was in that situation, the Iraqi government refused to allow uh, assurances to the United States that U.S. troops would be invulnerable to any kind of criminal charges in the Iraqi uh, court system. Whether or not the Afghan government is prepared to fight for its own accountability for U.S. troops that might commit war crimes, we don't know. If they don't agree, we could be faced with the situation that I hope for, which is to get all the U.S. troops out. Well, that also brings up another question. I mean, if we look at Iraq again, the United States set up uh, what they called benchmarks at the time, security benchmarks. You know, right. we will stand down as the others <clears throat> rise up and take over from us. Are uh, Afghan troops, the Afghan National Army, are they capable of maintaining security in Afghanistan right now once all Allied troops leave? I think it really depends on how we define security. Afghan troops do not have a very good uh, impression or view of the U.S. troops. We're seeing that more and more with these so-called insider attacks by Afghan troops and Afghan police on the U.S. troops that are training them. It's whose side are they on? The reality is that the Afghan army is simply one more militia in a very divided country with many, many militias and way too many people with way too many weapons. And if the United States does leave a sizable number of troops after the end of 2014, I mean, are those troops simply going to be bodyguards for Hamid Karzai? That's a big part of what they will be. One of the big questions that people in the United States have to ask is what's the cost of all this? We paid $111 billion just this year for the cost of war in Iraq. And if you look at the U.S. economic crisis that's underway, the cost of keeping one young American soldier in Afghanistan is a million dollars a year. Not because the soldier's getting a lot of money, half the soldiers qualify for food stamps. If you brought home just one of those young soldiers, that million dollars, you could hire that soldier and 19 more at good, strong, civilian, middle-class jobs, $50,000 a year jobs to support a family. What's going to make us stronger? More and more Americans are looking at that question. What's the cost of this to provide bodyguards for Hamid Karzai? Phyllis Bennis, thanks for joining us. Thank you.